Hey guys, so today I'm going to be talking about how to have a godly relationship and I'm going to be talking about boundaries and like what goes into a godly relationship and things like that. In no way, shape, or form am I saying that I am like an expert on relationships, but I do know what the Bible has to say about relationships. Back in February at my church, we talked about relationships and like love and I just haven't talked about it yet. I want to talk about it now. So I have my notebook of things. It's a little confusing because I took notes on this so I kind of condensed all my notes into like a big list um because we did like a series for like a month around valentine's day by the way i am a little sick three questions that you need to ask yourself are what do you desire for your life where do you want to go and what are your values godly values do matter the most important one is what are your values i feel like that's the most looked over one but like the most important one make a list of the things that you look for in a future boyfriend you can have physical things on your list it's not a sin to have physical things my list i'm obviously not going to share like everything because it's kind of personal but i have a list on my phone something that you can also like check up on these faith related videos that i'm going to make i feel like are all going to be all over the place because like i'll think of something else and then i'll come back to it and like so it's going to be a little crazy my dream guy loves god more than me they're a true Christian, not just like putting on a show, you know. Loves me for myself. Y'all don't really see my full self on camera. You kind of get an idea that I am a little bit crazy and weird. They don't want to like change me because I'm crazy or whatever. It makes me laugh. They're weird like me. Like they're funny. They're weird. Never pushes boundaries. Doesn't cuss. That's honestly what I look for in friendships as well. It's just like I really don't like when people cuss it's kind of impossible especially if you're in school because people don't see it as a big deal we don't try and do these things to please god we do them to try and be like him and then my kind of physical things has good oral and body hygiene i hate whenever people don't like brush their teeth or brush their tongue i put supports my love of makeup because some people can be like very you know like why do you keep buying makeup or like even people that i'm close to some of my family does that too that's what i do that's what i love supports me and then i said loves me obviously favorite physical traits in a guy i smile <laughs> but hair no thick gel just natural and guys have that slick back and i'm gonna slide make your list what you want in a guy so that you can make sure guy or girl y'all don't need to lower your standards for your girlfriend or boyfriend you should never lower your standards be like oh i guess i shouldn't look for this because i'm never gonna find someone with this don't lower your standards god matters to you let him lead in your life and in your relationship without god how can you trust that they will honor you if you don't have values if you don't have morals as in you don't strive to be like God, why wouldn't they just cheat on you or push you past your boundaries? Why would they do that if they have nothing to live up to? You need to get right with God and with yourself before you even try and have a relationship because if you're not right with God, then you probably aren't making the best decisions either. That person might not be the best decision. God's perfect love will transform your life and your relationship. You should love with the same love that God loves us. Because if you love with that same love, he died on the cross for us. It's literally so crazy to think that he, like that anyone would do that. The point of love is serving someone else before yourself. I wrote down Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. This is a passage about wives and husbands. I'm going to read the end of it. So I'm going to read verse 32. The secret truth is very important. I'm talking about Christ and the church. But each one of you must love his wife as he loves himself, and a wife must respect her husband. So that was the ICB version. A tip for you, if you can't understand like a passage, just go to ICB version because it's like the children's version, International Children's Bible, so it will explain it in a more like children's way, you know? So if I would have read that in NIV, it probably would have been like a lot more R 
yeah the three things that go into a good relationship are god me and love you need to be right with god first you need to know who you are in christ two is me you need to stop trying to please people stop trying to change who you are people do anything popular to find their identity you need to ask yourself is this really me or am i doing it to please these people and i've talked about this before like you shouldn't care what people think people will do anything to make them fit in they'll do very bad things but non-godly things whether that's having sex before marriage whether that's doing drugs drinking alcohol illegally things like that jesus faced every temptation that we have faced but he never sinned and he faced every temptation but he just said no so why can't we just try and be like him the third one is love we use words so casually we'll say oh love you i oh, love you do you really because we should use the word love as god loved us so like do you love them enough to die on the cross for them love was created for us to bring glory and honor to god just like jesus brought glory and honor to god when he died on the cross and the question is do we do we honor god with our love this is what my pastor kind of compared it to he said fire is beautiful when it is in a place once it gets out of hand it destroys and consumes things society says that love is like oh just this happy thing just because you're happy that doesn't mean that you're in love it just means you're happy you're having fun eventually that happiness just the happiness will fade away and then you'll just have to repeat it and find happiness fun and other things if you aren't careful love will consume and destroy you so you'll be caught up on the idea of love and not pleasing god you'll be consumed by the things that you can do with your significant other outside of marriage that comes to boundaries this is first corinthians 6 12 in iv i have the right to do anything you say but not everything is beneficial i have the right to do anything but i will not be mastered by anything you say food for the stomach stomach for the food and god will destroy them both the body however is not meant for sexual immorality but for the god and the god for the body by his power, God raised the Lord from the dead, and he will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Shall I then take members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. That was through 15. I definitely recommend you just reading 1 Corinthians 6. It's not the stuff, it's the refusal to trust God. So it's not the things that you're doing that really matter. It's just that you're not following God's plan it's just your refusal to trust god i don't need this earthly pleasure i just need god we shouldn't live with boundaries to hope to please god we live with boundaries to follow god's plan god can transform your life if you've been a sinner all of us are sinners but if you've done something that is against god's will then you can just ask for forgiveness you can't just think oh God's gonna forgive me and then go do it again. This is where it comes to John 8 11. I love this story. I just need to go read John 8 1 through 11. This woman was caught up in the act of adultery and the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Jesus straightened up and asked her, woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. She did commit adultery which is a sin he said whoever has not sinned for the first stone no one did it because everyone sinned we've all sinned a sin of lying and a sin of adultery is still a sin he forgave her but he said go now and leave your life of sin so we have to act repenting and asking for forgiveness and we also need to accept the forgiveness you don't need to be like no i'm so bad i can never go on to my life because i I'm just so awful. And then you need to change. You need to go and leave your life of sin. You need to stop committing the same sin. Long story short, relationships without God aren't very smart. My pastor gave this example. Adam wasn't pursuing anyone. He was fulfilling the role of God. When Adam was here by himself, he didn't have anyone that he was pursuing. He didn't have anyone he was trying to impress. He didn't have anyone distracting him. God gave him a helper. At the same time, we don't need to just like look around and wait for someone to pursue. We need to go and do what we need to do. Do what God has called us to do. Then God will send you your perfect 
help a person who you were meant to be with. If you have someone that you have a crush on, dating, boyfriend or girlfriend, go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. Isn't that so powerful? Love should be all these things. Now replace this person with love. If it was me, <laughs> Allie is patient. Allie is kind. Allie does not envy. She does not boast. She is not proud. Allie does not dishonor others. Allie is not self-seeking. Allie is not easily angered. Allie keeps no record of wrongs. Allie does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. She always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. A person's name fits there perfectly. Not saying that my name fits there. You need to make sure your person is these things. That's what love is and if you love them, if they love you. I feel like that's like the most powerful thing that I've kind of seen. You will know does this person fit into any of those things or all of those things or none of them. Oh, I didn't write this down but I just remembered one point that he said that like really really stood out to me. If this is where the edge is to being bad and this is God you shouldn't be like, oh, how close can I get to the edge before it's wrong? You need to be seeing how close can I get to God. So you shouldn't be focusing on, oh, how close am I to being wrong? You just need to focus on how close am I to God. So I felt like that was such a good thing because most people are like, oh, well, I'm not doing this yet. Honestly, like, if you keep pushing boundaries, you're gonna get there. Quick little real talk on boundaries. I haven't had my first kiss. To most people, first kiss might not be very special. But to me, I feel like it's very special and I want it to be with the right person. We shouldn't treat those things so lightly, so casually, like love. The first step when you hold hands, that's going to lead towards kissing maybe, then making out, maybe touching other areas. Where are you going to go if you just keep pushing off the boundary and making it more up until maybe having sex? If they don't have the same values as you, or if you don't have values, then you're just going to get pushed right off the boundaries. It is a pretty sensitive topic. If you weren't a Christian and you've already had sex and now you are and you feel like I'm unworthy, things like that. If you ask for forgiveness, if you look at Sab and Cole's story, I don't like referring to people, but Sab and Cole's story is just so powerful. Yeah, that's about all I have to say about boundaries. Boundaries is just something, uh, it's just really hard to talk about. If you like someone, if you're with someone, replace love with their name in 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7. So I hope y'all learned something from this and hopefully this wasn't too long either because I feel like I just rambled and rambled and rambled. If y'all have any more topics that you want me to talk about, please leave them down below because I want to make more of these videos. If you know any good Bible verses about um, boundaries, love, like any of these relationship type verses, please just leave them down below. I really hope you all enjoyed this video. But if you did enjoy this video, I would love it if you subscribed down below. It would mean so much to me. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Here are my notes. I don't know if that might help y'all, but y'all can screenshot them if you can understand what they're saying.